I think it's very important, and you do a very good job of this, delineating uh, between totalitarian socialism and what they call or brand democratic socialism, because it still is socialism. And I've experienced this in Quebec, obviously. I'm, I would assume to a lesser degree than India, but it still is a 52% income tax rate. Mm. You still are talking wow. about a socialized healthcare system where, yeah, listen, now they opened it up to privatization in 2005, but when my mom needed an MRI and they had fewer MRI machines in the whole country than they had, I think, in the state of Vermont back then, then wow. if you pay a few hundred dollars under the table, you can get an MRI within a couple months as opposed to 14. So um, I think it's important for people who've experienced that to be out there uh, speaking to, to their experiences. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, at the level of pure principle, democratic socialism differs from totalitarian socialism, <clears throat> kind of like gang rape differs from individual rape. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> look at well, it this I'm... way. <laughs> look at it this way. I'll explain that. You know. Uh, Let's say, I guess, let's yeah. take <laughs> uh, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, let me process this. And also, by the way, it reminds me, Audio Wade, we need to tell yeah. that story about the uh, the elephant seal elephant rape, seals, because yeah. that we were talking about that before. We'll come back, we'll to, come it, back yeah. to it. Continue with your rape <laughs> analogy, Mr. Jesus. <laughs> uh. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, right, so what I'm saying is that <laughs> in, both case, in both cases, the coercion uh, whether the coercion comes from one guy or from a majority. Imagine you have a group of people, they all have one marble, right? And mm -hmm. one guy has 10 marbles. So authoritarian socialism means that one guy gets to grab the guy who has 10 marbles and take his marbles. Here's democratic socialism. A majority of the people with one marble all decide to use the same level of force um, but use the fact that a majority of them have decided to confiscate the other guy. In both cases, the other guy is deprived of his property. Right. right. In one case, it's done by one guy. In the other case, it's done by force, right. by a group, claiming the legitimacy of the majority. And that's my point. Is yeah. That in yeah. a sense, from the point of view of principle, there's no fundamental difference. There's a confiscation in both cases. There's force employed in both cases, and an injustice is done in both right. cases. Exactly, and that's why it's very important to understand the idea of private property and constitutional rights. Like you said, yeah. I think it's a brilliant analogy. In one case, somebody takes the marble. In the other case, the nine marbles take the remaining marble. And if Joe Biden were at the helm, he'd just lose them. There oh, would be no, where? no huh? yeah, he marbles. He doesn't have them. Huh? No marbles. Why am I? Bangarang? All right. Uh, <laughs> it is Dinesh. Just, the book, I believe, is um, available for pre-order June uh, 2nd. It's going to be out on June 2nd, United States of Socialism, correct? Yes. You can pre-order it now, but it won't be in stores until later. So I'm just thinking through. And, you know, there's a, what's strange about it now is, to me, when you go into stores and they're empty, my wife's from Venezuela. So she's been telling me about the empty stores in, uh, in, in Venezuela now for years. Yeah. Uh, but I never knew what that felt like. But now a little bit with this strange virus situation, we're getting a preview of what normal life is like in socialist countries. 